Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Razak School of Government first webinar in 2021, our 14th installment in total. To this webinar is called Society and Innovation. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items and the structure of our webinar sessions today. To those who follow this webinar through Zoom, please mute your microphones. We are also broadcasting this webinar live on our Facebook. This webinar sessions is divided into three segments. First, we will begin with key question posed to our guest speaker. Then we will answer questions from participants. At any time during the webinar, you may submit your questions to the guest speaker. Just type your questions in the chat and comment section. Please keep your question short and straightforward. As time allows, we will address as many questions as possible. Lastly, we will then wrap up today's webinar session. This webinar is recorded and you will be able to assess this recording via our Facebook and YouTube page. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker. Sonika Mananda is co-founder and the chief talent officer of Alloy Technologies. Alloy Technologies is a financial technology platform that uses digital tokens to bridge the last mile impact financing gap for green micro entrepreneurs. During her decade as a software engineer, she aimed to make technology accessible to all literacy levels. During her career, she has gained insights into improving technology and business models for digital financial services. Sonika is best known for being able to communicate with the grassroots micro entrepreneurs, translating the knowledge in building and improving the technology platform to match the user's need. She has earned numerous honors, including the United Nations Capital Development Fund, the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for the Asia and Pacific, and she has been named as one of seven young champions of the earth by the United Nations Environment Program. Sonika holds a degree in computer engineering from Tribhuvan University of Nepal, and graduated from the Singularity University's Global Solution Program. She also attended the Korea Aerospace Research Institute. Sonika, let us get started. The first question to the guest speaker, what does innovation mean to you? Thank you, Mr. Johari. First of all, Josalapa from Nepal, whoever is joining us uh, through Zoom and Facebook Live. I am very, very glad to be part of uh, this web series and uh, looking forward to interact with whoever is joining via Zoom. Please um, feel free to ask any questions when, uh, uh, you know, regarding my talk topic. And um, thank you for the first question. So what is innovation for me? Uh, innovation often, I found it, uh, you know, uh, like people have misconception over innovation, right? Innovation is not always about, um, you know, building this high tech, very sophisticated tech. We always talk about, you know, innovation, you know, AI, blockchain and stuff. But for me, innovation is actually um, making it very, very simple, whatever you are building, make it so simple that it can be used by any uh, literacy level and anyone in the world. And that's the, that's the basic motto that I, I really follow. And that is ex exactly what we have been doing uh, through my company, Alloy Technologies. So we work with a lot of grassroots women micro entrepreneurs who are in informal sector. And that often means that they are not uh, digital or uh, financially fr friendly, right? They are not um, 
not very friendly with technology or the innovation we talk about. Um, they are often in intimidated with sophisticated technologies, which is why we thought, okay, uh, if we are building something for uh, the grassroots, then we have to match their needs. We have to say, okay, um, if you are familiar with SMS, then we'll build SMS. Even though I'm a computer engineer and it only takes like few uh, hours to build an app um, in today's age, uh, we still decided to go very basic and uh, build our whole system in SMS so that the grassroots users, whoever we are working with, the women micro entrepreneur could use our technology and uh, get benefits through it. And uh, when I talk about innovation, I, um, you know, because I'm tech mind, I'm only talking about technology, but then innovation can often uh, come from very grassroots level and also, uh, you know, the very traditional, very, very old technology like financial or, uh, you know, financial services, which is why um, Alloy decided to um, combine finance and technology uh, and, and create a beneficial fintech software uh, for the grassroots women micro entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what's innovation for me. Make it very simple so that it can be very inclusive uh, to be used by the grassroots and uh, you know, built for grassroots and used by grassroots. That's what uh, I would like to define innovation as. Thank you, Sonika. If we get you correctly, there are mm -hmm. two key points that you just shared with us. The innovation must be simple and it must, it must match with the needs of the end users. Yeah? Uh, our second question, Sonika, is what is the role of innovation in the society? Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. That's a very, very important question. Um, so role of innovation in the society, uh, I think I, here I'd like to uh, share the story. Uh, you know, one of the sector we work here is electric vehicle sector. <clears throat> and um, it started, you know, back in 1995 when I was five years old. Uh, this sector is mainly driven and operated by women. So 700 women came together and made Kathmandu a green city pioneer 25 years ago when there, you know, no, no one in the world have brought that many fleet of uh, electric vehicles in public transportation. And, you know, as transportation is mainly run by males and it has been a very, very unique industry for us and Nepal being, um, Nepal having a high hydropower potential, we saw, okay, this electric vehicle sector is going to really boom and, and um, we'll see a lot of electric vehicles in the future. But that really didn't happen, right? I mean, 25 years later, now I'm 30 years old, grew six times, but then the industry is still 700 or even less. Uh, we see a lot of, um, we see a lot of, um, these tempos, who, which is three wheelers, right? Three wheeler electric vehicles just rusting in the garage. And we really wanted to know what happened to this innovation that started 25 years ago and made our city, Green City Pioneer. And these kind of innovation, right? Again, it comes from the grassroots, but then it never gets the kind of um, highlight that it, 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 it required. So we really dug down uh, the problem and we found out that, you know, because women, we're the lead of these and because women you know traditionally don't own any kind of proper property to um you know put it as collateral in the formal banks to get the kind of finance they need to grow their business and it's it's really the cultural norm that's that's had been um uh, being their blockade and they are not able to find the kind of affordable finance they need to upgrade their technology, 25 years old technology. And that is exactly why they, they have not been able to upgrade their batteries. And even if they um, could, then it's very, very high upfront investment and the formal banks didn't trust them without any collateral, right? Even though they, they sometimes some, some women, they own the property, but then they are not the decision maker of the house to say, I am going to use this property as collateral and then get the finance and then run my business. They don't, they often are not the decision maker. So uh, the main issue that we found was the issue of trust. So there was no trust between the funders and these women uh, micro entrepreneurs. Uh, the banks wouldn't trust them. The impact uh, funders wouldn't trust them because it's very, very low financing 
it, it takes a lot of monitoring effort to see where the fund is going and what kind of impact it is making, or is it actually going in the electric vehicle sector? Because often the monitoring process is very manual and very, very lengthy process. So um, Alloy, our company, uh, we thought, okay, let's, let's grow trust. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's grow trust with technology. We, you know, um, so we uh, we actually designed a software uh, which uses digital token to disperse um, the loans or the funds that they need, and the money actually will tell you where it is right now. So the funders mm-hmm. now have the trust or have the um, you know assurity that the funding they are sending sending towards these women micro entrepreneurs are actually being used for the intended purpose and not being misused and and creating the kind of impact that it um it was supposed to so yeah so that kind of innovation in the society is very important and and in context of nepal it has shown the potential that nepal can be you know nepal does not need to import any kind of fuel but it can actually export uh, the hydropower potential and electricity to other countries right so very, very grassroots level innovation, local innovations like this has been going from ages um, now, but then uh, we have not been able to highlight them or, or give the kind of priority that they need. Um, yes, so that's, that's how I'd like to a- answer this question. Thank you, Sonika. Uh, in, the, in the case that you just shared with us, uh, it appears that the role of innovation in that particular case is to the grow trust so that the lenders and uh, the, the woman, uh, yeah. both of the needs can be matched. Uh, the last question to the guest speaker, how to encourage an innovation in society? Sonika? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, thank you for that question. Um, I think I, I, I would like to link uh, this uh, answer of this question with uh, how I answered the second question, right? Yeah. Um, again, going back to the kind of innovation that is coming from the grassroots or the local uh, communities, we really need to invest uh, in, in, in the local grassroots innovations. We, we shouldn't be neglecting them. And that's what's ha- have been happening. Uh, again, giving the example of this um, women drivers who has been you know, leading this electric vehicle sector from 25 years, but then what happened? Where are all those data? Uh, you know, even today, the formal banks don't trust them and, and there's no trust linkage between, you know, we, when we talk about impact finance or, or uh, mm. finance that comes to tackle climate change, there are a lot of uh, finance from up above, but when you when we look at the grassroots, there's nothing. I mean, how, how mm-hmm. much of that impact finance is actually reaching to the hands of grassroots, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there, there really needs to uh, be proper investment or financial vehicle that really supports the grassroots. And, and you know, we have to, we have to, um, very near in the future, we have to say, okay, this traditional way of credit scoring is not working at all. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the data points such as income, uh, how much they are earning and how much they are spending, it's not enough to find the credibility of the person. We have to say um, we, need, we need some alternative data points to be able to trust the borrowers or, or you know, these women micro-entrepreneurs. Um, Sometimes it can be, you know, how much uh, they have spent the time in, in this beautiful electric vehicle sector, right? Or, or um, you know, how many pa- passengers they have been driving every day. Mm-hmm. or you know how much of carbon emission they are reducing every day so the, the, those kind of important data points um, uh, are also are, should also be taken into account while uh, you know uh, calculating their credibility and um, and to bring uh, the kind of investment that they need um, so yeah, the first point I mentioned is um, investing in the grassroots local innovation. And second is, um, I think, uh, which is very important is promoting uh, whatever they are doing. Because right now, um, again, from the example, right now what we have been seeing is, okay, Nepal has this electric vehicle industry, so what? You know, like, no, nobody is really talking about it uh, enough. And, and uh, which is why, 
nobody knows that this Safa Temple industry with 700 feet of these three wheelers never grew. I mean, I, I have been talking it, about it in all of yeah. my talk and people are, people are like, really, Nepal was really a green city pioneer. We never know about that. <laughs> and, um, it has been only talked, talked about in, in some, uh, in few conferences and that's it but we we never highlight those and we never try to you know support them to really uh grow their business so yeah two two mm -hmm. points i'd like to highlight one uh we need to invest um in in the local grassroots economies uh, innovations and second is uh to promote whatever they are doing so that they, they feel more encouraged mm -hmm. thank you monica while waiting for the question from participant uh, if we can add another question based on yes. what you have discussed so far. Uh, you are young, Sonica, yes. and you have achieved a lot. So is it culturally accepted in Nepal uh, in getting ideas and feedback from young people? Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, what was your experience? And mm -hmm. if you face difficulties, how, how do you overcome it? you can share with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so being young and raising your voice is a problem, not just in Nepal, I guess, it's all yeah. over the world, right? Uh, and and my my problem had been, I'm, I'm 30, but then I don't look 30. That's also one of my problems. <laughs> so people would say, uh, you know, you're, you're so too young to be uh, saying that, and mm. they have this you know, mindset that young people should have some kind of limitation and they, their knowledge is not enough. But what I, uh, how I defend that is, you know, how we are tech savvy and, and the kind of jobs, uh, you know, COVID have also shown that mm -hmm. the whole world needs to go digital and people need to use technology. But, um, but what percentage of the world is actually ready for that? You know, how, what percent of the world is ready to go digital? It's not ready. I mean, we are only talking about a very, very small group of people in the world that, that who are tech savvy. And I think young people would be instrument, would play an instrumental role in, in um, taking, you know, including everyone who are not yet ready for, ready to go digital, to go digital, you know? So we have a very important role to play. And uh, I, I, I would like to say, I'm also playing a very, very small part uh, in that to, uh, um, to helping the grassroots go digital and, and to kind of build the kind of credibility they need, need, need to build to grow their business. Um, yeah, so th that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned about, uh, okay, I, I start to receive questions, Sonika. Uh, yes. This is from Iqbal. Uh, Iqbal is asking you, did you have a role model growing up? <laughs> Uh, yes. Um, so I, I would say my parents, it might sound very cliche, but that's very, very true. Uh, you know, the reason why uh, I really feel so much uh, about transportation is because of my family background, right? Mm. My father was uh, one of the micro entrepreneur. Uh, so coincidentally, he also started uh, his uh, transportation business 25 years ago with a loan supported by government. So actually why I, I feel so much about micro entrepreneurs and this transportation sector is because my father had been one and he had graduated from being micro entrepreneur and today you know I'm talking in front of you as a computer engineer as a co-founder of Alloy Technology just because he could grow, grow his business and give the kind of education I needed right and um, I see a lot of informal sector micro entrepreneurs like my father um, uh, in the sector who needs uh, the financing and who needs uh, uh, to grow their business so that their children can become Sonica uh, in future right um, so yes, uh, father is uh, one, and I think my mother had been very, very instrumental in um, in growing me as this confident girl. Uh, she had she had never been dependent. I've I've seen all my life that she has been supporting the family and also done numerous business. I my family it's it's yeah. I, I come from a very you know. Uh, 
a bit entrepreneurial from the very beginning. And uh, today I, 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 I am an entrepreneur because I've seen from my childhood that, you know, it's, it's the power that you have to um, not just uh, be financial stable yourself, but then also empower others, employ others in the process, um, right? So yes, uh, those two are my role models. Uh, next question from Owen Sonica. Mm -hmm. Owen is asking you, how long did you take to achieve the success that you have? And mm -hmm. how do you stay committed to your work? Right. Uh, regarding the first question, uh, very straightforward. Uh, uh, you know, Alloy started uh, end of 2018. So almost uh, two years, uh, two years, yes, uh, two years uh, of Alloy uh, now. But my career path uh, it started back in 2011 when I graduated as an engineer, computer engineer. So I started working, and um, I, you know, there, there, it has been a roller coaster ride for me. Um, uh, I have met a lot of mentors, and one, one of the mentors, uh, I think Mr. Johari also knows him, Amjad. I met him back uh, right. in 2015. Um, yes, so it. It's, you know, like nine years now uh, of my career, if you really want to know. Um, and uh, for Alloy, it's been two years. And uh, again, for Alloy as well, it has been roller coaster ride. We have been um, uh, very fortunate that uh, we have been recognized by many organizations like um, UN agencies and uh, National Geographic and, you know, uh, many other prestigious organizations that have really helped us um, kickstart or do whatever we want. In, in a very easy way. So people really start listening to us because of this award also, right? Um, right. So that, and how do I stay committed to my work? I guess, uh, you know, my mot motivation has always been, uh, um, there's one, one guiding word for me, uh, which is drive. Um, and uh, I define drive uh, in a way that, you know, everybody has their own way and own pace to get to their goal. I mean, drive to their goal, right? right. In, in their own way. So that's that's uh, my definition of drive. And I think my drive here, um, I've explained it a lot uh, in my talk also, but uh, what really drives me is that I am, today I'm able to use my, um, you know, technical skills, computer engineer and help the ones that really needs my help, right? And and all while building my own empire or own company. And that's that's something that's really helped me stay committed in my work. And um, building something burnout is also very, very <laughs> real. I've, I've uh, experienced that. And, um, uh, you know, I, I sometimes it feels like you have to really power through and do uh, keep doing what you what you're doing but then right. you also need to rest well and you have to take care of your mental health and your physical health as well right so um yeah i have a few hobbies that i opt into whenever i have to uh when, whenever i feel stressed for example i sing i go for a walk and mm. i have dogs to talk to so yeah mm. yeah that, that's uh, the mixture of things i do really help me stay committed to my work and also stay energetic uh on whatever i'm doing uh sonica uh there's another question from from the participant, yeah. this time it reads, what advice would you give to those who are passionate in solving social related issues? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, one, um, one advice I would give is to look around your community. You know, whenever we are talking about social issues or uh, so, I mean, you know, it just sounds like very giant issue, right? Uh, you know, this climate change, it's, it's very, very, it sounds very huge, but then uh, just like how my company found a very, very local problem, for example, this electric vehicle sectors problem, right? I would really suggest you to look around your community and, and start very small. You don't have to, you know, move the biggest rock in the world. You just have to go and look out in your community and find one problem and start, um, start, uh, you know, uh, working towards that to, to try to solve that and, and just 
not keep the idea in your mind, but just go there and get your hands dirty and, and talk to people who you're okay. trying to help and, and know the real issue first before you try to find the, uh, find the solution. Uh, Mr. Dazri uh, says that McKenzie and company estimate that 84% executive believe their future success is dependent on innovation. Uh, it is also important in terms of economic growth and helps to self solve soft problem like what you said. The question is, especially during pandemic, what would you expect for your country to face this challenge? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any particular would... area? Right, right. Um, I, I think I would uh, again want to uh, like to go back uh, to one statement I, I made earlier. Uh, COVID have really pushed, uh, you know, every corner of the world to go digital, right? What percentage of the world is actually ready? And I think that's that's exactly what uh, not just my country, but all the country have to think um, how to make sure that each, you know, everyone uh, in your country or in my country uh, can go digital. Um, and I think uh, I completely agree that, uh, you know, here he have given the percentage about 84% uh, of the executive, uh, it, you know, their, their success depend on innovation. That's, that's very, very true. But what kind of innovation are we talking about? Cool. You know, the per perception of the innovation is very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, are we talking about um, innovation, like 10 years in the future, everything will be, uh, you know, uh, controlled by robot kind of innovation or, right. or, uh, in 10 years, uh, you know, all the population in the world will be able to go digital and have um, have enough opportunity to grow their business and and kind of, uh, and uh, will be able to live the life healthy and prosperous, right? So there are two kind of perception, I would say. Right. Uh, so it totally depends. Uh, if we're talking about this robotic world, then it might not happen in 10 years because robots yeah. are not that <laughs> sophisticated <laughs> yet, um, as we see in the movies. Um, but yes, for me, uh, the future success definitely depends on how much digital or how much, uh, um, you know, um, automated the whole process is or how much we can include the whole population in the process of going, um, being innovative, right? So that's, uh, that's my answer to that. Uh, Sonika, you mentioned earlier and just immediately about asking the questions is, are you ready for digital? Yeah, because digital has been uh, closely associated with innovation. How do you make assessment on whether that particular group is ready for digital? Any particular experience you can share? Yes, yes, sure. Um, I, I have mostly experience talking with uh, women grassroots micro entrepreneurs and uh, uh, you know whenever we talk with them we found that they are a bit hesitant to 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 uh, try out new things uh, you know in, in a group of uh, if we if we segregate two groups and put men in one group and women in another group and mm -hmm. give the same thing to both of them right um, we, we have found that women would uh, you know, just be so, so, so careful and not try things out. You know, if you if you give a bunch of buttons, then men will just try try them out. But women are most hesitant. So we need to. Uh, I think that's when we that that's the kind of trigger uh, we found that uh, we need to really help push the women to try things out. You know, even though they will fail. I mean that's the motto for everyone, right? Uh, don't don't be scared of the failure. Just try it out, and if you fail, then you learn and then move forward. So that's the kind of mindset that we need to really instill in those women micro entrepreneurs' mind. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think uh, the question is around uh, if how we how we know that if they're ready to go to. Mm -hmm. We lost Sonika's voice. If we can hang for a while for for Sonica to get connected again, that does not mean we cannot yeah. try, and we can always try by uh, making the innovation or technology less intimidating for them, and and wanting to explain hundred times if if uh, if required, right? So 
the group, the kind of team I have in Alloy have made it so easier for us um, um, to to really translate, you know, transfer our knowledge base to this grassroots micro entrepreneurs. Yeah. So a big shout out to my team as well here. <laughs> We have quite a number of women participants in the group at the moment. Maybe they can give you feedback that uh, men would like to try more as compared to women. Yeah. Uh, there's another question, Sonika, from the participant. It reads, you consistently mention that innovation is simple. How can I pitch simplicity to management that expect innovation to be grand and complicated? Uh, if you don't mind, can you repeat the question? Uh, the question is, yeah. how can I pitch simplicity to management uh, or to your superior that expects right. innovation to be grand and complicated? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very interesting question because we, um, we also sometimes struggle with that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it totally depends on uh, the audience, whoever is listening to you. Uh, as a startup, we pitch a lot and we also pitch to different kind of um, uh, group, right? Sometimes if you're uh, pitching to people who likes to hear you know, this buzzwords or, or high tech things, then we talk about, oh, we are digital tokens and, and this is how we are going to uh, solve this problem. And then, you know, we are going to uh, implement blockchain in the future. So you always have to uh, really um, align your words according to your audience, your target audience. But the same pitch, we cannot go to the women mm. micro entrepreneur and say, oh, we are using digital token, blockchain, blah, 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 right? We cannot really say that because they don't understand. Um, so we have to really simplify our terms and uh, our terminology to saying that we are just giving out digital loans and that's how um, it will help you grow your credibility, right? So those are the two uh, examples I would like to give. Um, so if you have to pitch to your superior who likes to hear buzzword, then you have to go, you have to say the buzzword. It, it doesn't <laughs> work that way. So just find the buzzwords and, and make it as sophisticated as, as possible. But then for uh, the users who you are trying to solve the problem, you have to make the technology very, very simple. Yeah. That's a very practical tip. Yeah. You <laughs> make it sound like complicated but in actual fact it's simple <laughs> uh, yes, another question from mr amran harris uh, mm -hmm. most country facing aging society do you think new idea and new innovation can be accepted among this group and how mm -hmm. to overcome this challenge right right um you know this question uh, brings uh, the issue of friction between uh, new generation and older generation, right? Uh, but what I always like to highlight is young generation cannot survive without uh, the old generation. We cannot afford to lose the wisdom and the knowledge that the old generation has. Of course, they have their own ways of doing things and we have to really accept that. I mean, they have to accept the new ways of things we are doing and then we have to accept the old way of thing they have been right. doing. So it's, it's a, there has to be a perfect balance between these two generations, right? And um, how to overcome this challenge? I guess it's just a matter of, you know, talking their language. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, they probably don't know how to talk our language, but we can definitely try to uh, talk their language and, and be empathetic and, and to try to understand where they're coming from, right? right. Uh, at their age, they didn't have this kind of technology and they didn't have uh, the kind of sophistication we had, but we have to try to understand. And um, again, talking from the experience, if you go to my Instagram, I, I, there are many women micro entrepreneurs that we work who is like, my grandmother's age right <laughs> you, you, see, you see a lot of pictures there as well now, but they I think they take it very, very positively if you simplify the term. 
Right. Again, don't use the words like AI, blockchain, robots to them <laughs> because right. they will not understand. So you have to talk their talk and then try to simplify the terminology and say how this is going to benefit you and, and your uh, newer, your uh, children, right? And everybody wants better for their children. So it's, you know, it's the better earth, better environment, better community everybody wants. That's, that's the only goal uh, that everyone is working towards. At, be it older generation or newer generation, it's just a matter of how you convey the message. Okay. Uh, Sonika, you have consistently mentioned about the importance of communication and how you relate to the particular group that you want to help. Uh, you, it appears to us that that is one of your greatest strength that, that mm -hmm. bring you uh, an alloy to the place that you are today. Do you receive any kind of training, uh, Sonica, that mm -hmm. helps you to enhance your communication skill, enhance your people relation? Can you share with us, Sonica? Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't received any training, like, uh, you know, uh, per se, like specifically for mm -hmm. communication but it just comes from the experience. I mean, it's been almost 10 years that I've been, you know, uh, right. in, my, in my professional career, right? And I started as a um, uh, trainer who used to uh, train students to program. That's how I started my career. So I used to train students and I have trained like 1200 students, um, right. uh, information technology students to how to build apps uh, back in 2000, from 2011. So that's where, uh, that was very difficult for me. Uh, that's that's uh, very true. I will not lie. It has mm -hmm. been a very, very um, uh, difficult process for me. And uh, I am an introvert. I don't like to be, uh, talk to strangers, right? <laughs> uh, but that's, that's, uh, that's very much a learned behavior. And um, I think, again, going back to talking in their language, right? Whenever I'm talking to student, I have to talk their language. And whenever I'm talking to the microfinance or the partners or the stakeholders uh, of Alloy, I have to really shape the um, shape the language in, in their terms. But then it doesn't come, you know, it it didn't happen mm. overnight. It, right. it took long longer process and I'm still learning. And, right. um, and there has been, um, not trainers, but coaches that we receive from different program, and they have mm. been very, very uh, helpful in in you know narrating our story. Because if you if you mm. go back, what even one year back and see the videos of Alloy, we we uh, we were not able to talk like this. We we couldn't narrate the story in a simple way. But then if you see the video today, it's it's very much clear that what what's our core and that what we want to tell people. So yeah, it's it's. It's a long process and it will be a process still. I, I wouldn't say I'm perfect today, but then I'm better uh, uh, today, uh, you know, than nine years ago and I'll be better in 10 years in future also, yeah. There's a follow-up question uh, from, from that question, Sonika. How important is coaching or mentorship in innovation? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it is. It is very, very important because whenever you're, you know, your innovation is always, uh, will, will always be your baby, which means it will never be wrong. Uh, you know, whenever you're building something, it's like your baby and you feel very, very dearly about that and you often don't want to change. But if you involve other people's perspective, for example, mentors and coaches, or even your users or your partners' um, perspective into that, you would uh, you would realize that how much you need to change. Mm -hmm. And for example, 2019, we, we ran a very, very small pilot with 18 farmers, women farmers. And we found that, you know, simple terms like typing hash in SMS was a problem for them. But for us, we felt that, oh, it's SMS, it's very simple, and uh, it should be like, you know, butter for them. But it was not. I mean, we realized when we actually went to the field and talked to them and, mm -hmm. um, you know, they tried our, our SMS um, 
platform, we found that no typing hash is you know in in the smaller Symbian phone, it's it's you know like winning a war. I, I, even I couldn't find the hash uh, symbol there. So uh, it's it's very important not just mentor and coach, but also to talk to your real users and the, and the partner you're going to involve um, in the process to talk to talk to them and and uh, you know find uh, their perspective and um, their knowledge into it. Yeah. And every bit of knowledge from your mentors and coach's mind is very, very valuable. Uh, there's another question from Owen, uh, which quite related to what we are currently discuss. Have right. you ever been stuck in an environment where you are unable to think and focus on your goal? If so, mm -hmm. how do you overcome it? Right. Um, yes. <laughs> it, it, uh, I mean, it, it's not um, it's not rocket science, right? Everybody uh, <laughs> stuck uh, in whatever the goal they are trying to achieve, and I guess uh, for this, I, I'd like to mention the fact that if you have. Um, a partner or the co-founder, then it gets very, very easier. I think she is also here. Uh, yes, so if you go in the audience <laughs> list, you can find Tiffany. Um, she's my co-founder. And whenever, um, you know, you're human, you, you can always get stuck. But then if you have someone uh, to bounce the ideas and, and talk about it at least, um, and uh, find solution, then that's very, very useful. And uh, definitely I'd like to uh, suggest that you, uh, whatever you're trying to achieve, if you find a partner uh, who aligns to your goal and, and also sometimes challenge your, um, challenge your, uh, challenge you basically, right? Uh, to, to reach the goal is, is very, very important. And um, as I mentioned earlier, you don't really, if at times you're unable to focus on your goal, it's perfectly fine. We are all with human and it's perfectly fine to go and sing one hour of karaoke and come back and think about it again, right? Mm -hmm. Let it sit. You don't have to just do it right there and then. Um, maybe you like to go dance. Maybe you like to go and talk to your friends. You know, take take the, take, uh, the right kind of um, um, de-stressing activity that you like to do um, and and again come back to your goal and think about it I think it, it really helps refresh your mind and, and think about that problem um, in a different way yeah Sonika most of our participants today they are in the they, they work with the government of which mm -hmm. the ultimate goal is to do better and better for society yes. from your observation what is currently lacking in the society and mm -hmm. how do you think we can plug that particular deficiency? Right, right. Um, that's, that's a very, very uh, good question. Uh, I, I also forgot to bring uh, that up, I guess. Uh, I think the friction between uh, the people and government has always been like, the people don't trust government, right? Uh, again, the problem of trust. Um, even though there are a lot of programs that government is bringing for the people, for the benefit of people, uh, you know, there there is some level of corruption might be, or or maybe there there is not corruption at all. Maybe it's just mismanagement, mm -hmm. right? And. Um, just yesterday, I was talking to one of the government people from Department of Agriculture here in Nepal, and uh, she mentioned that they have brought a lot of subsidy program for women farmers, but it has been so difficult for them to do the monitoring and actually mm. trust uh, the women farmer that they are using the subsidy for um, for the intended purpose. You know that that really matches on what we are doing through Alloy, I guess. Um, the problem of trust between the government and people can really be solved with digital technology, um, the technology like alloys. Uh, for example, if you, if, uh, you know, during COVID also, we saw a lot of um, food, food programs that the government brought. I'm not sure about Malaysian um, market, but just talking from my experience in Nepal, there was a lot of uh, food distribution program and there was a lot of friction between people and government saying, oh, you, you didn't give me good quality food. But I, I, I guess if we had uh, built enough infrastructure to be able to say, okay, government is giving a thousand, um, you know, or a hundred dollars of uh, food subsidy to these uh, common people, 
in tokens or, or in any digital media, they would just go and buy from their trusted vendors, right? And there's no friction between the government and people. But then we didn't have right. that kind of infrastructure to go into the field and make that happen. Mm -hmm. But that's a very, very good learning lesson for everyone, I guess, um, for the government and also for the people to say that we really need to go digital and, and um, you know, uh, to, uh, to say that how to build uh, the trust between the government and people. And I think the, the main problem uh, here is also the problem of trust and it can be solved in some way uh, with, with digital uh, tools, yeah. We trust you, Sonika. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if anybody, anybody in the audience or uh, yeah, any, anyone in Malaysia wants to use our technology, we are happy to come there. <laughs> uh, there's a follow-up question, Sonika. What yes. would be the one thing you wish you knew 10 years ago? Right. Uh, yes, I have answered this question many times, so I have the answer. Uh, <laughs> I think 10 years ago, I wish I, I knew that, uh, you know, perfection is not real. <laughs> ah, I, I, I didn't know that I, I, I had that, that perfectionist uh, mindset, but uh, recently I realized that and I, I, I felt that I could have saved a lot of stress if I knew that perfection is not real, right? Whatever you're, you're doing is perfect and not at the same time. So you always have to think that whatever you're doing, you, you really have to try it out and, and, um, and, you know, iterate the process if it's not perfect, but then you don't uh, keep it within you thinking, oh, what will people say? Is it perfect or not? You know, if, if I uh, bring my solution to the market, will it work or not? Um, but now today I know that if you never try, you'll never know, right? So it's, it's yeah. So the perfect balance of knowing what's perfect and what's not is, is not think about it and just try it out. <laughs> yeah. Must keep trying, yeah? And yeah. <laughs> accept the fact that perfection is not real. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonika, if we can go back to society, uh, yes. can, can you share with us generally what is the society like in Nepal at the moment? Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, because we have just uh, we have been going through COVID crisis, right? I I, I think the society they are very very uh, how would I say warm and friendly uh, because in COVID uh, again the friction between government and people was there <laughs> for for the food distribution, but then we saw a lot of helping hand popped up within the community saying, oh you 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 are having trouble um, uh, getting food, then I'll share my food, right? very, very basic level of uh, friendliness that, that we saw. Um, and of course, uh, in terms of innovation, we saw a lot of innovations popping up as well. Uh, digital innovations, I would say. And, and just to add to what, uh, how we uh, try to reshape, reshape uh, our model with these women drivers where um, in, in the long down or, or at least in the COVID phase, we saw that a lot of e-commercial businesses popped up in the process because now people can't really go physically out and buy the stuff they need, right? Buy the groceries or buy whatever they need uh, from outside. So we thought, okay, let's change the model. Let's say, you know, how about these three-wheeler electric vehicle transport goods instead of people? Because people yeah. are not really um, uh, commuting anymore. So let's let's try it out. Let's try different models. So I think in the society as well, that's just one example that we tried out. But we have seen a lot of innovations or a lot of um, reshaping the existing model that was happening within the society to really, uh, you know, cope up with with the kind of change the whole mm -hmm. world is facing today. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, another le question for you, Sonika. Yes. What lessons would you derive from the pandemic? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I, I, I think I've, I've uh, answered this mostly. Um, the first lesson is change is inevitable. <laughs> so you cannot really ignore change, right? Uh, but again, uh, you know what how how would you like to change you know positively or negatively i mean you can always have the mindset saying oh this pandemic this really struck very hard and i uh, you know all the problems are with me and you you always have that uh, 
can have that negative mindset but then you know within within our company or within me we we always thought about how to change these challenges into opportunities and one of the example i gave is is transporting goods instead of people because these are daily wages workers right they cannot really eat uh, if they are not earning every day right. uh, so which is why we had to really rethink the model and we had to embrace the change but then try mm -hmm. to uh you know embrace the change and and uh, change the challenges into opportunities so that we can really cope with the new new normal i would say and new normal mm -hmm. and then also uh, to say everybody eats and everybody works right so the to to have the perfect balance so that's that's one of the lessons we have um we have uh, uh, gotten through pandemic and right. um, yeah helping each other of course from my society i've seen that also right. Uh, you mentioned about you changed your business model from transporting people to transporting good. Uh, yes. I guess we notice, we observe the similar experience in in, in Kuala Lumpur, the capital right. city, where mm -hmm. quite a number of our e-hailing drivers right. they now help in terms of food delivery instead of uh, ferrying people from one end to another. Yeah. They, they try yes. to adapt to the situation. Right. Yes. Uh, okay, less serious question from the participant. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite movie, Sonika? Oh, um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I love movies, but I don't have one favorite, but... Uh, just what's coming in my mind right now is hidden figures it's about the women's oh, science okay. uh, uh, you know fly the rocket uh, and that's mm. that's very very encouraging and inspiring movie for all the mm. women and not just women I would say you know everybody who wants to bring the change and um, be the pioneer I would say because I'm, I'm very uh, for uh, you know I, I love being pioneer and I, that movie just proves that also and it just proves that if you really put your heart and mind into something uh, even though there are a lot of challenges you can really achieve um, achieve your goal you just have to set your eye uh, in the goal that you uh, want to achieve and just you know uh, go for it yeah uh we be serious again okay <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what is one particular innovation i mean besides the the vaccine that the society mm -hmm. currently need to fight the pandemic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you you would say i'm biased with my technology but i think yeah. the, the society uh, I, I've talked a lot about digital tools, right? I think the society really needs to uh, needs to adapt into new normal. Saying, even though you cannot commute, or even though you are not able to go out to do do your work, you should be able to you you should be able to uh, live at least, right? Yeah. And be it live with the kind of mm, donations government is pushing towards them or yeah. uh, live by changing reshaping the model of your work uh, you you really need to um, think and embrace the change again and and uh, really go go digital i guess that's that's something that really that's really needed and covid really have shown that um, even for us um, we, we, we are currently in two different sectors, right? Agriculture and the mobility sector. Uh, for agriculture, we work with remote areas, rural areas in Nepal. And because of pandemic, we saw that we really can't go there and train people. Right. So how could we really, it's, it's the age of internet, but then still many <laughs> percentage yeah. of the population are disconnected. And I could only travel there December uh, this year, uh, I mean, last year, 2020, and, and talk to them. And I think it really helped us, um, the pandemic also really helped us think about how to really run the remote trainings, even though right. they uh, are miles away, you know, uh, uh, far away, we can still run the program mm -hmm. from here. And it really um, helped us uh, think how to design our training materials so that, um, again, how to make our materials digital so that from the city, we can really connect with the remotest area uh, in, in the country to talk to them and to help them go digital. Mm -hmm. uh, another question, 
which relates to society. This is from Farha. Yeah. What are the core skill or behavior for a digital society? Mm -hmm. Um. I, I wouldn't give like a technical skills kind of answer here uh, because it's all about the mindset. Right. If you if you're willing to change and if you're willing to adapt, then the society can go digital in, in I mean, overnight, I, I would say. I mean, of course, with the support of mm -hmm. um, uh, support of uh, others who, who knows the digital uh, tools. But uh, the first and foremost skills um, is, is uh, the mindset and, and willingness to adapt to this new normal and, and to the digital society. Mm -hmm. And second is, um, I guess, in every family, uh, again, going back to old generation and new generation, right? New generation are always, always very tech savvy and, and very digital, but then the older generation are not. And it's often, we, we have heard that from the older generation, at least they, they say that, oh, my, my kid does not, my grandkid does not uh, teach me because they are irritated very fast. And <laughs> so I forget um, what they teach me today. And I ask that again. I, I think uh, also the second one that I would like to highlight is patience. Um, yeah. Patience uh, of the older generation with the newer generation. And it goes both ways. Uh, you cannot be irritated just because the grandma is asking the same question next time, right? So yeah, two things. One is uh, willingness to adapt and change um, and second is uh, just have patience with uh, within uh, I, I mean between uh, the digital population and non-digital population so that there is a synergy between two and uh, the knowledge sharing between the two. Sonika you seems to have a lot of patience which I envy. How, how do you gain such uh, level of patience? Sorry I, I you, you broke uh, your voice broke out can you repeat? You seem to have a very high level of patience. How, how do you gain such patient level? Uh, that's a good question that I don't have answer to. I guess I am naturally that way. I'm very, very patient. Um, but maybe, uh, you know, my patience comes from, you know, I take it as if you don't understand me, then I have to make sense. Um, right? And um, one of the experiences we had was when we uh, when we were uh, forming our company here in Nepal, mm -hmm. and um, one of the lawyer he he tried to make us understand that we are we are not for profit, but but we wanted to establish as for profit, right? We are a private company, and we want to be um, uh, that way. But the, but I think he wanted to make us believe that we are a social cause kind of nonprofit organization. And uh, I think I took it as a challenge saying, no, I'm going to tell you that why we are for profit and where our revenues are coming from. And I did that for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't have a perfect answer to that, but I guess that's um, that's probably it. I mean, I take it a challenge to make sure that you believe, uh, you understand what I'm coming from and what I want to tell you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have come to the end of today's session. Sonika, would you like to offer some parting words? Um, yes, I, I really enjoyed uh, talking with um, uh, everyone uh, present here on Zoom and uh, also on Facebook Live, Thank I guess, you. there are a lot of people. And I, something I really enjoyed was a lot of questions because I guess our uh, very key questions, um, it was very short. Uh, it was not 30 minutes at all, I guess, <laughs> as I experienced. But the kind of question we got um, in the chat and, and uh, maybe also in Facebook Live, I'm not there, but uh, it was very interesting. And thank you for listening to me very carefully and very interestingly. And I'd really love to connect with you if you see any potential um, collaboration opportunities, or just if you have any questions um, after after this, uh, please feel free to find me. I'm Sonika Manander, my full name everywhere. So uh, feel free to connect and um, yeah, just if you just want to bounce ideas, I'm, I'm uh, always uh, available. Yeah. Sonika Mananda, thank you so much for spending time with us today. We wish you good health, Sonika so that you can continue to contribute to the society, to come up with more innovation for the society. We would like to thank Dr. Amjad Ravi, 
which yes. is who is the dear and common friend of Raju Soji and Sonika, who uh, connect Raju Soji with Sonika. We also would like to thank colleagues at Alloy Technology for the support. We thank the participant for taking part. We value your feed, views and feedback. We apologize for any shortcoming. Please follow us on social media for future session. Till we meet again, take care and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sonika. Thank you. Bye. Have a so good much. day. Yes.